The Utah Utes in college football playoff position, at least according to our experts here at CBS Sports. They are ranked number four in our preseason rankings. They were number seven in the preseason AP poll, which came out today. The Utes return nine all Pac-12 selections and 17 starters, and they've got a doozy to start the year. They are on the road at Florida, and they are two and a half point favorites in that game. Utah coming in behind only Alabama, Ohio State, and Georgia in our CBS Sports rankings. You can find the whole list from one to 131. We rank them all at cbssports.com. All right, let's get Tom Fornelli in here of the Cover 3 podcast. Tom, Utah has had a bunch of really good teams over the last 20 years. Some would say even great teams. They have a couple of undefeated teams, one with Urban Meyer, one under Kyle Whittingham back in 2008, but that was when they were in the Mountain West. Now uh, a a Power 5 program is this Whittingham's best team. He's been there nearly 20 years now. Yeah, I think this is a team that certainly has the potential to be Whittingham's best Pac-12 version of the Utah team. You mentioned the twenty, the 2008 team that went undefeated. They started the year with a win over Michigan and finished it with a 14-point win over Alabama in the Sugar Bowl. I don't see that this season ending that way, but I do think that in the Pac-12, this is a team that's starting the year as a favorite in the conference for a reason. They got to the Rose Bowl last year. You mentioned all the returning starters that they have coming back in the experience. So this is a talented team, a tough team, and a well-coached team. But I do have some areas of concern because while they have a lot of starters back, a couple of the starters who aren't back, like Devin Lloyd, were the most productive players on the team. And I think that's going to be difficult to replace. And I think another thing we have to think about, too, is... What is USC going to look like this year? Because with Utah, it's not a coincidence. Kyle Whittingham has won four to Pac-12 South Division titles during his time with the Utes. In those four seasons, USC was a combined 25 and 26. In 2016 and 17, when Clay Helton's USC teams won 10 games a season, Utah went 16 and 10 and 8 and 10 in the Pac-12. So even though the Pac-12 has gotten rid of divisions this year, they're still playing a divisional schedule. And it's going to be interesting to see what the Utes are able to do now that USC is expected to be a little bit better with Lincoln Riley in town. They do get USC at home in Salt Lake City, which could be a huge matchup this season. You mentioned some of the holes that they might have on defense. We'll get to that in a second. Let's start on offense. Cameron Rising, a breakout star last season, had that shoulder injury in 2020. And he said even last year, he was only about 80%. Coach Whittingham says that Rising has no weaknesses entering this season at 100%, Tom. Well, you know, even Achilles had a weakness with that Achilles heel. So I think Cam Rising (laughs) is a very good quarterback but he's also got excellent hair and i think there's plenty of reason to be excited because this was a utah team that once cam rising took over the starting job last year in this offense they kind of went to another level he's a very good quarterback and while he doesn't have the prototypical kind of rocket arm that you would think of for an nfl prospect he's got an arm that can make just about all the throws and what he does better than most college quarterbacks is He takes care of the football. He doesn't put the team in bad situations. His interception rate of 1.6% last year ranked 17th in the nation. He had a touchdown to interception ratio of 4 to 1, which was 19th. And his mobility is key, too, in that he is able to keep plays alive and avoid sacks. He was sacked on only 2.4% of his dropbacks last season. That is the third best rate in the country. So when you have that kind of quarterback and some good receivers, you know, they have to replace Britton Covey, but they still have talent at the receiver spots. They have talented tight ends, and you know they're going to be able to run the football. This is a team that's going to be tough and physical, and it is going to put points on the board. Cam Rising is a big part of that. That running back is Tavion Thomas. Set a school record last season, set some conference records last season. And technically, he only started four games. What do you see for him this season? Yeah, it's incredible because he did finish the year last season with over 1,100 yards rushing. He had 21 touchdowns. And as you mentioned, he only started four games, but there was also early in the season, he was having some fumble problems. He was straight up benched. 
So he did not play the full, he wasn't the full-time running back. He didn't play in every single game and he still finished with 1,100 yards and 21 touchdowns. So what's he gonna do when he's getting the rock more often than anybody else? I think, I love Tavion Thomas. I think this is a guy who is going to have an NFL future. He's very tough between the tackles. He can run through contact. He can avoid tacklers. He's got everything you want in a running back. He can also catch passes out of the backfield. I expect that he will have another big season for the Utes because one of the things that Andy Ludwig's offense does is they are very balanced. We see a lot of teams these days that are pass heavy or run heavy. Utah does an excellent job of keeping you guessing. They can run the ball. They can throw the ball. There's a lot of play action. It's very difficult to defend. And Tavion Thomas is going to be one of the big contributing factors for that in 2022. He's going to be one of the best running backs in the country. Tom, as you mentioned, the question is, what can they do defensively? Where last season, they were dominant at times. A game against Oregon comes to mind. The lasting impression, though, from Mm -hmm. last season is Ohio State with a depleted offensive roster just torching them for 48 in the Rose Bowl. How's the secondary looking this year? It's important to remember Utah was pretty depleted on the defensive side sure. of the ball that game as well. They had they had running backs playing in the defensive backfield. Imagine <laughs> having to put your running back covering Jackson Smith and Jigba. That went about as well as it looked on the field. But this is a team that defensively, the secondary is mostly intact. Every starter but safety, Vontae Davis, is back. And that includes Clark Phillips the third at corner. And we have seen in recent years, Utah has produced some very good cornerbacks. They have sent them to the NFL. They've gone on and produced and played well. I think Clark Phillips is the next guy to fill that role. He will be possibly a first-round draft pick when he leaves school. He's got an excellent partner in Javaris Broughton next to him who is. He missed a lot of last season because of an injury, but he's also, the coaching staff is very high on him, and if he's healthy, Phillips and Broughton give Utah one of the best combinations of corners in the country. At safety, they've got Cole Bishop, who is pretty much your prototypical strong safety. He is the guy who's the hard hitting, comes up in the box, he stuffs the run and he does all that other stuff. But what will be key to me with the secondary is I mentioned Vontae Davis, the free safety is gone. They need to find his replacement, the good compliment to Bishop because he is not what you would want covering tight ends down the seam. The most likely candidate to fill that spot is a transfer from Illinois State named Clayton Isbell, who has been very impressive in camp. The coaching staff is high on him. I think he could be a name that most people don't know yet, but could be a name that's very well known by the end of the year. But uh, those on the team last year and and certainly on the coaching staff would say that Devin Lloyd was not only uh, their best player, but they they thought he was the best defensive player in the country. What are they planning to do to to fill that void, a first-team All-American and a first-round draft pick? Yeah, it's hard to believe there's going to be one player that just steps in and does everything that Devin Lloyd did for this defense last year because he really was tremendous. It's not just the talent that he had that helped make him a first-round pick in the NFL draft, but the production that he had. He was a one-man wrecking crew for the most part flying all over the field, and he's going to be difficult to replace. And while he is a tough ask to replace, there's another player they lost to in linebacker Nafai Sewell, who doesn't have the kind of eye-popping numbers that Lloyd had, but was a veteran leader and was kind of the captain of that defense alongside Lloyd. So those are two very big people to fill in the middle of that defense and in that locker room. They combined for 199 tackles last season, including 29 and a half for loss. But Utah is confident that they have a couple of guys who will be able to at least step in and maybe not match that production, but do a good job as a unit of making sure they don't fall off too far. Lander Barton is a name that you're going to become familiar with in 2022. And they have a transfer from Florida, Mahmoud Diabate, who is a very talented player who they think can fill the Sewell role and help, you know, help out the linebacker spot, help them against the run, help them in coverage. And also, you know, it's it's going to be tough to replace the leadership and production but I don't think we're going to see a tremendous drop-off. It could struggle early, though, with new guys calling the defenses. All right, it's time for a worry-free pick presented by Zevo. And, Tom, Utah starts on the road in the swamp to start the season, and they have to give two-and-a-half points. Florida, a team that uh, is, is as a first-year head coach in Billy Napier, uh, rebuilding, so to speak, Utah expected to win this game. Are are you comfortable giving those two and a half? No, I I love Utah this year. I think Utah is going to win the Pac-12, but going on the road in the first week of the season to play Florida in the swamp as a favorite, little bit of a bridge too far for me. I just think that's a tough ask. SEC teams, if you look at the trends and how they've done in spots like this, as underdogs in non-conference games since 2017, the SEC is 24-19, and and I think that going into the swamp is probably going to be a bit too much for Utah. They might win the game, but it's going to be close. So if I'm placing a bet, 
I'm taking the Gators and the points. I just think that it's the Gators are even with the questions that they have, they're still a very talented team, and they were they're going to be able to hang tough with the Utes. Uh, Utah's win total this season is set at nine. They get USC at home. They have to go to Oregon. Which side are you landing on? I think the number is correct. I think nine and three is your most likely outcome. If I have to pick a side, and I think I'm here to do that, I give a slight push. As underdogs in non-conference games since 2017, the SEC is 24 and 19, and I think that going into the swamp is probably going to be a bit too much for Utah. They might win the game, but it's going to be close. So if I'm placing a bet, I'm taking the Gators and the points. I just think that it's the Gators are even with the questions that they have, they're still a very talented team, and they were they're going to be able to hang tough with the Utes. Uh, Utah's win total this season is set at nine. They get USC at home. They have to go to Oregon. Which side are you landing on? I think the number is correct. I think nine and three is your most likely outcome. If I have to pick a side, and I think I'm here to do that, I give a slight push, just the absolute slightest push to the under, because I, as I mentioned, I like Florida in that opening game. So I think you're looking at a very likely situation in which the Utes start 0-1 before they even get to the conference schedule in the meat of it. And while they do get USC at home, they have to play that game as the seventh consecutive game before their first bye of the year. So this is a team that could be banged up going into that game against the Trojans, which could be key for them within the Pac-12 title race and will be key for them in this win total. And then they also have three of their last five games on the road. So if there are any injuries, and let's be real, every team suffers injuries, that final stretch of the season could be tough. So I think 9-3 and three is your most likely outcome, but I would go 8-4 and four before 10-2. and two. Okay, then you're probably not interested in the college football playoff at 4-1. to one. Those are the fifth shortest odds in the country to make the college football playoff. But in conference, plus 210, co-favorite in the Pac-12 with USC. What do you think? You know, actually, I like the odds on make them making the playoff more than I like them the really? odds on winning the play or on the Pac-12. Because, listen, plus 210, they are the favorite. I do think that they are a very good shot to win the conference. It's just when I look at the Pac-12, Oregon's got a chance. USC's got a chance. Even UCLA and Washington, I think, are being a little bit underestimated. So I don't love the value. I do not think Utah will reach the playoff this year, but at 4-1, to one, I think there's enough value there to make it a bet worth taking. The one I would not take is Utah 40 to 1 to win the national title because even if they get to the playoff, I just don't think they're going to be good enough to beat the Alabamas and Georgias this year. Utah, our fourth-ranked team at CBSSports.com. They are number seven in the preseason AP poll. Tom Fornelli with us. You can hear him on the Cover 3 podcast, the very latest episode focusing on the quarterback questions that we still have many of throughout the country. A bunch of great teams, great programs, LSU, Texas A&M, still trying to figure out who their starting quarterback is going to be with games beginning in just a week and a half, week zero. The rest of the week, we count you down to our number one team. We've got Georgia tomorrow, the defending champs, and then Ohio State, the number two team in the country, followed by our number one and the number one team really across the board in college football going into this season, the Alabama Crimson Tide. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.